Right, welcome back to the channel. We're back on this uh, renovation refurbishment project today. Last episode, we was up in the roof doing all the heating pipes. We've just got a little bit more to finish off. We've just got one last drop to put over here, which will pipe up, and then we've got the hot and cold to take across the bathroom. Um, the bathroom, oh, falling over myself. The bathroom, oh, all needs stripping out, all tiles off, get it back to blank canvas. We've got to move that water main. I'm not sure how much we're going to get done today, but all this needs stripping out. So I'm just going to focus on um, up in the roof, really, and um, get the rest of the get the rest of that stuff done. Uh, get this last drop put in, get it connecting up to the main run, and then we'll have a look in the garage, getting some gas in that clip round, um, and then flow and turn into the lounge. So yeah, that's what we're going to crack on with today. It's going to be quite warm, um, so I want to try and get it done up in the roof before it gets too hot. So yeah, we'll uh, crack straight on. So I'll just bang this drop in here quickly. Obviously, I just set the laser up just to get a straight line up for my clips. I say always pop your clips on first because then you end up with a nice straight pipe. I've got to try and hook this. I might need to shorten that leg a little bit. Right, that fit the first time as well and that's absolutely perfect. Can't do any more than that because there's a gap between them joists but you can't get a 15 mil pipe through. It's like one one joist out the wall and then there's one away. This, these still is being overboarded anyway, that's why we're too careful, but that bend is as perfect as it can get it. So what we did is we kicked out and then across and that fit the first time. So I've just got to match the other one the same. Right, this bench should be identical to the last one. I've just got to try and get it in. I never measured my bends. I'm just sort of guessing actually that one, I need a touch more on it. Right, I've just quickly bent four offsets just to go underneath this timber here. So I've got to pick up them flow and returns. I don't know if you can quite see them. Well, I've pulled the insulation back. There are the flow and returns I've just put in. These are my flow and returns coming across. So we've got the 22 main run, and then we just branched off 15 because all this feeding is that radiator over there. And then we've got a tower rail going in the bathroom over there. So I need to take hot and colds under this timber, heating under this timber. As I say, I've just bent them four offsets. They're not absolutely perfect, but nobody's ever going to see them up in the roof. If if they were on show, I'd get them bang on. They're within, they're within a couple of mil of each other. So I'll just get these connected up onto the there. I've put some bits of timber across, we'll clip them and that'll be fine, we'll get this bit done. Oh, shit. Right. Let's see if we can feed these underneath. You probably can't see anything anyway. I'm trying not to get insulation in my pipe. Linking pipe glass. fine what i'll do is just shorten them back yeah they'll be perfect we'll get these soldered up we'll try and make them so they match but obviously it is easier to get your bends perfect when you're not balancing off a beam in a roof space to be honest with you obviously if you're in a if you're on a solid floor not, not, quite, not trying to fall through a ceiling, it does give you an advantage. I know a lot of people would have used plastic up in the roof, which is fair comment. Yeah, I, I'm Obviously, I, I always prefer copper because I, I honestly think it's a better job in the long run. And the, the amount of times I've seen plastic fittings in that chewed by mice, you know, it does happen a lot. Just so I say, copper, copper will still be here in, well, when I'm gone. But it should be if I do a good good enough job. And I say, it doesn't take me that much longer. I know I could have fed plastic underneath the joist a lot quicker than I could copper, but what's it it's taken me like a minute to bend. So foot four, what, four or five minutes just to bend them underneath. So yeah, it is, you know, it is what it is. We'll be all right. We'll just do our bit, best we can. That's all you can ever do. Try and give the customer the best job possible. Right, so that's got them under the wall. Obviously, I've left enough just so we can get some lagging on there. And what I'll do is just clip along 
clip along here and clip along there pick up my flow and return over there and then we'll just run 4.15s across for the hot colds i'm probably not gonna do much in the bathroom yet until i get it all stripped out because i want to chop the pipes in the wall but i'll leave them over there we can see that one that's lagged in the white lagging over there that's the shower feed at the minute so we know we need to be roughly somewhere over there so i'll just leave hot and colds over there ready and the kitchen ones will end up chopping in the wall in the bathroom and just taking across to the kitchen sink which will be over there so the run the run for the hot isn't too long obviously combi boiler in the garage just well just below there so we've got yeah it'll be, it'll be perfect this not too bad at all i'm just using these talons with the spacers just to um space the clips up a bit so i can lag them a little bit easier they'll just move to the side Gem generally i put my clips on first but i couldn't measure through very easily so we just draw all i've done is drawn around them and then we'll just bang the clips on easy enough let's see it's nice to keep stuff bang straight but honestly when you're in a roof space it is difficult Whilst I'm connecting these pipes in, I thought I'd uh, talk about how I got into the industry. I know I said the other week I'd make a video explaining how I started. I know a few people will be starting college um, in the next couple of weeks, or they may have already started. I was, at, to be honest, I was at, I had an extremely lucky start because when I left school, we was in a recession, and the place where my dad worked, he's a joiner. Um, they got a plumbing apprenticeship going, so I took that. Honestly, I don't, I don't think you really know what you want to do when you leave school. I know I wanted, I know I wanted to be in the construction industry, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Obviously, I'd never done any plumbing before. Uh, I'd done joinery, bricklaying, and painting and decorating at uh, school. It was like a, well, a diploma in construction they called it, for what it was worth. I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but yeah, I took um, took plumbing on, and I didn't know what to expect. And what, obviously, I worked for a company who did everything really. Like my first day was um, we had to take out an old oval um, big blown gas boiler. So yeah, we did pretty much everything. I mean, the chap who trained me, he could do he could do everything. Um, I went to a job once. Let me bring the light around. I went to a job once and the, um, we needed to boss onto a lead soil pipe and there's not many guys you could weld onto lead soil pipes to tell you but he could do everything with lead I mean he'd been plumbing he'd been plumbing his whole life and uh, when he trained me I was he was 63 I think um, and he'd worked worked for worked for that company his whole life um, since you know since he was 15 so that takes some commitment and dedication so yeah, I was really lucky. I had a really good teacher, and obviously we did we did all sorts of work. You know, iron pipe work. Lead, I did a lot of lead work. I did did pretty much everything, and that's how. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm good. I'm not I'm not saying I'm the best plumber or anything like that. But I do I do do quite a lot of different stuff, and I do enjoy doing that sort of stuff. And so it never really bothers me what I'm doing as long as I'm busy. So yeah, that's. Um, so my apprenticeship was quite varied. Uh, to be honest, I got chucked in at the deep end way too soon. As soon as I passed my test when I was 17, I was sort of out on my own. Which not knocked my confidence a lot, because obviously you're not you're not really experienced. When you've only been doing it sort of a year, 18 months, you don't really know what it's like to go on your own. And I remember one of the first jobs I ever did, I had to go, it was a big it was a big old people's home and it was a, it was a two-inch one pipe system and they were putting a lift shaft in and I had to move all that and I turned up and I was like oh my god what am I doing but you just sort of you just sort of muddle through because you, you have to you know sink or swim but yeah I was I won't say I was panicking on that job quite a lot to be honest with you it was middle of winter as well they put in this lift shaft through and they needed all these pipes moving and by Christ I had to drain the whole system down I managed to get some valves in and then we made like a um, a hair and beauty thing as well. Well, not, not so much hair and beauty. Well, you know where the old people have their hair done. Made like a made like a studio for that. So I had all the plumbing. That was one of my first jobs I did on my own. And as I say, I was probably 17, 18. And doing all that, it was scary. But you do it. You do it. You have to. 
And I, and I wish I'd been making videos back then, showing you some of the stuff I, I, I used to do. But yeah, that was my biggest regret, not making videos when I first started. But I, I guess YouTube, when I first started in 2008 or 2009, YouTube wasn't really a thing. And it doesn't seem that long ago, but I don't know when the first video to YouTube was uploaded. And we didn't have, like, I didn't have a smartphone, and we wrote like that, so you couldn't really record anything. So it wasn't easy. But I wish I'd, I wish I'd done it five, five, six, seven years ago. Just pulled a couple of bends to get them out that corner. So I sold a couple of sockets up over there, and then these just need, I'll cut them off over here and bend them again somewhere. These just need connection onto these flow and returns here. They're hot and cold, they're flow and returns, which come off the main run, and then they just go across the tower rail. So I'll get that bit done, get the awkward stuff done out the corner, and then we'll get, we'll get connected here. Right, we're in the garage now. Uh, my flow return hot and cold are up there. Obviously, this is a heat only boiler. We're taking this out and putting a combi in. What I'll do is I'll upgrade that gas. I'll just run high level all, all the way around. Gas meter is over there obviously they've offset around the electrics to obviously keep the distances we'll we'll do the same but i'll obviously upgrade this to 22 and i'll bend everything i'm not sure why they've taken a 15 to the boiler and then there was a 22 running along anyway but that's by the by i'm just going to i'm just going to renew the gas i'm not going to bother picking up that 22 it's too close to that electrics down there anyway and then it's, it, it disappears behind that unit thing what i'm also going to do is run a 15 mil flow and return off the boiler we've got a radiator on the back side of that wall in the dining room i don't know whether to run them low level i might that unit thing just pull forward so i might just clip a 15 flow and return all the way around and then pick the one up in the in the lounge as well which will come about here i think it might even be a little bit further that way but yeah i'll get them drilled through we'll get a gas clipped around i haven't got enough 15 mil copper to finish the run but we'll get most of the awkward stuff in and get everything sort of tucked back flat to that corner ready to put the boiler in i don't know whether to put a baxi or a worcester in um i do like baxis and worcesters i know i know some people slay worcesters because the right hand sides leak and stuff like that but I put a Worcester in at my dad's house in 2009, I think, and it's never had a flow turbine adapter, touch wood. Um, it's only had one bearing plate in, what's that, 14 years? So it's not done bad. You know, it was a CDI, uh, the 30 CDI um, combi I put in there. It's never had a right hand side. I've put a shock arrestor on it and a cow mag and all the bits and bobs. So, yeah, I don't know, Baxi or Worcester or Valiant or Viesman, what do you fit? I don't know, ideal? I don't know. But yeah, I'll make my mind up. It'll either be a back to your holster, I think, in this one. Right, I've been round, put all my clips on. What I'm going to do is try and bend everything. Um, a bend is less resistant than a 90. It used to be 0.3 metres and then half a metre for a 90. I think it still is. It's, it's three or four years since I did my gas, but I don't think it'll change. So obviously, I need to keep this away from uh, the electrics. Yeah, we'll be having a new fuse board, but I don't think there'll be any more circuits going in. But what I'll do is I'll step it across and give them plenty of space. And then we'll bend, oh, we bend everything up. That should be our eat. Well, I've done a slight pass over. So imagine that's the conduit. All I need to do now is measure from the centre of my bend to my centre of the pipe that I've got going across. So from the centre of that conduit to the centre of that pipe is, what, 405. Transfer that on and then we'll pull a square bend back that way. So how I always get it right is just put my former or my guide, I don't know quite what to call that, in the center of that. So you can see that is the center of our bend. So bend wants to look that way because we're pulling back around. So we've got the offset and we've got the bend and we'll pull that back around there and that'll be perfect. So that in there and then we'll give that a pull. Right, that first bit's all in, I'm happy with that. Um, we've got the same to do over here, but this is not a, a crossover. This effectively the way I, well, it is a crossover, but I always think this is just two offsets, piece in the middle and then an offset back. So offset and an offset, and we'll set that out. Well, I'll pretty much match what they've done to be fair. And then we'll just connect that onto the meter and we'll cap that end off for the time being because we can't leave an open-ended open gas pipe. 
Yeah, I think it should be fine. 22, 22 will be ample because we've got, what, another meter or so down to the boiler. And as I say, I'll just do one square bend at that end, one pulled bend, and that'll be in. So I pulled that first bend. That is my mark. I'll just measure what they had in between, between their mark. And it should be the same. So we've got, what, roughly, what, 170? So I'll put 170. I'll measure 170 across on my one. Everything being equal, we should be about right. And I'll just pull the same bend, but back this time. So it'll come back and then back through. And that steps over that meter. Right, that's once in, all soldered up across there. I'm just going to connect it onto the meter and for the time being I'll just cap it off over there and then when we get the boiler we will drop it down. But that'll be fine. It's all done to regs. Obviously we needed the clearance of the electrics and if they run a couple more circuits in there we've got a little bit of space as well. So yeah, happy with that. Obviously I'm not the best bender in the world but as long as it looks neat and tidy nobody's ever really going to say anything. I love the old uh, fake pipe clip and uh, the one screw in the meter bracket. I think we can afford on this job another screw in the meter bracket <laughs> yeah i'm just going to get this connected up real quick gas is all in as far as we can go for the time being electrician will rebond that uh, it's having a new fuse board as i've already said i've just blanked it off over there and we'll bend that back down for the new boiler when we get that as i say i still need to decide what we're having back seal or straw or whatever yeah but we've done that in the least amount of resistance possible we've just bent everything up which that'll be perfect. Next little job is going to be get flow and return in from the lounge. So we we'll drill through this wall. Obviously, we'll make sure we don't hit that gas pipe. I think it should be more over here anyway. Well, I think it'll be in that corner. Obviously, that gas pipe's dead. So I'll get them pushed through, and we're going to start clipping them around. Don't think I've got enough copper to finish, but yeah, at least the gas is all in. Right, we want to be drilling through right in this corner. There's a radiator going under this window. A new radiator. So if we drill through, that should get us into the garage. What I'll do is just put a pilot hole through for a start and then we'll put a 22mm one through so we can sleeve it. Right, I'll just pop some clips on nice and level. I've only got enough copper to sort of get to here anyway. So what I'll do, solder a couple of elbows, probably put a couple of T's at that end as well. And I'll just probably offset over that electric. I don't really want the heating pipes touching it, to be honest with you. The gas will be all right. I've got enough room on that because it's a bit further away. So yeah, a couple of drain off taps, a couple of offsets, and we'll get them bits in. And that'll probably do me for today. Right, we'll get these fluxed up in this corner. What I'll do is put, pop a couple of T's straight on here with uh, drain off tap straight in. And then if you ever need to drain the heat in, the majority of it, all the pipe work in the roof will drain from here. The, the radiator is in the lounge. And as I say, it's much easier. Much easier than trying to do it with cream carpets, isn't it? It's as good as an external drain off this. Every plumber's dream that external drain off tap. Because we don't like struggling. The GoPro is nearly flat. I've ordered some more batteries, and my batteries are broken. It's not it's not so much that they're broken, it's the little tabs that you used to pull them out, the actual GoPro, the tabs break off and then you can't get the batteries out properly. It's a good design. And they are in. Uh, that looks neat enough. Obviously, I've offset over that cable. Um, probably going to end the video there, just because it's coming towards the end of the day anyway. Um, I've got a fair bit done. I've been here, what, a day and a half? Nearly two days, I guess. I've got most of the heating runs in now. Obviously, gas is all in. Next big job, really, is to tackle the bathroom. I need to get all that stripped out back down, back, 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 if I can get my words out, back, 
back to bare bones, if I can say it. Um, we need to get hot and cold, we need to move that main, have a look at that drain as well. So there is a bit to crack on in there. Obviously, I'm probably not gonna start that today. I'm probably just gonna have a tidy up now and we'll tackle that sort of next episode. I'm not sure when I'm back. I know I'm not back here tomorrow. Um, but we'll have a look at that in another video anyway. Um, but yeah, the, most, of this, most of this is getting there. Obviously, the boiler won't be too bad to fit now. Obviously, if we've got hot coal heating up there ready to go. All the drops are in, so a lot of the bad work, um, a lot of the hard work is in. Obviously, it doesn't take me long to pipe up a rad off a drop. Um, obviously, I know we've got a bit of pipe lagging and stuff to do, but the majority of this job is starting to come together now which is good to see. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll start getting tidied up and we'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.